This is my female crested gecko, Echo, and for the past 13 months, she's been living inside of this enclosure. It's been great while she's been living in it, but unfortunately she's getting a bit too big for it. I need to make her something new, and this time I'm going to go with a custom plywood enclosure. This is a great option for any kind of reptiles, and it should be pretty easy to build. So today I'm going to build a simple DIY reptile enclosure perfect for a crested gecko. Here's a look at some of the materials I'll be using. I'll leave a list down in the description for a little more info. To start off, I'll use 2x4 OBS plywood boards. These are about a half inch thick, and I need to cut three of them to the same size. I started by measuring out the boards, then marking for where to cut. I then went on to cut the boards using a table saw. You could also use a jigsaw for this, but a table saw makes it much easier. I then repeated this process three times to get three identical boards. Each board is exactly 24 by 30 inches. With the boards cut, I could proceed to attach them. I lined them up and then used a drill bit to pre-drill some holes. I drilled a total of three holes on each side. After that, I lined the edges with some wood glue. This will help make it stronger and keep things together. I then used some screws to permanently attach the boards. I then repeated the process on the other side. With everything attached, you can get a little bit of a better idea of where I'm going with this. The plywood on its own is nowhere near strong enough to hold this thing up, so I'll need to make some supports using some 2x2 boards. Like before, I measured to the desired length, then marked for where to cut. After that, I ran it through the saw. I repeated this process a total of 4 times. With the fourth and final piece cut, I can now dry fit them. Here you can see how the boards will sit against the bottom and provide support. I also made two more for the top, but I'll worry about that in a little bit. The process for installing these is more or less the same as the plywood boards by pre-drilling a hole and then permanently attaching it with screws. I didn't add any wood glue to this part though. This is because there's a lot more surface area and anchor points. It probably wouldn't hurt to add a little bit of wood glue, but it's not necessary to get a strong structure. Anyways, I repeated this process on the front and back of the enclosure. I also used a few smaller screws to further secure the board on the back. Before attaching the boards on top, I need to account for a window screen mesh lid that I'll be making later. I used the frame as a spacer to figure out where I needed to attach the board. I then repeated this process on the front. I then went ahead to pre-drill the hole and permanently attach it with a screw. I then cut four more smaller boards for the sides of the supports. They were a little bit tight so I hammered them in place and secured them with screws. I repeated this process on the top as well. I also cut a 2x4 to the same length and added it to the middle of the bottom part of the enclosure. This probably wasn't necessary, but I wanted to add a little more support as the substrate could get quite heavy. With the supports in place, I placed in another piece of plywood on the bottom. I then measured for where to cut and ran it through the table saw. I then placed it back into the enclosure to make sure everything fit and then permanently attached it with screws. The front paneling will be pretty similar, but a lot of the pieces will be smaller. I measured for where to cut and ran them through the table saw. The measurements of these will be dependent on how thick your background is. Mine's one inch thick, so I cut accordingly. Then, like before, I pre-drilled the holes and permanently attached them with screws. Unfortunately, the remaining boards I had weren't long enough, so I had to cut a few pieces. I then repeated this process on the other side, top and bottom, to complete the front paneling. With the paneling complete, it's really starting to come together. To make sure that it's waterproof I'll need to seal it with something, but before I can do that I need to cover up the cracks. I started by vacuuming out the inside of it to remove debris and then adding some wood putty. I applied this to all the seams around the enclosure as well as on top of all the screws. It's important to make sure to get it into all of the little cracks and holes otherwise it won't seal properly. I then let it dry for a few hours and vacuumed out any remaining debris. With all that done, now I can seal it using some liquid rubber. 
Another viable option would be pond epoxy, but it's a lot more expensive and harder to apply. For a beginner, I'd recommend liquid rubber, and that's what I'm going to be using. I started applying it to the enclosure using a paintbrush. You could also use a roller for this to make it easier, but this is what I had on hand. I let that sit for about 48 hours and came back with a second coat. I ended up having to add three coats with a 48 hour cure time in between each one. The next thing I need to do is clean up that front paneling using some 8th inch plywood. I copied the measurements I had for the original stuff and ran it through the table saw. I also cut a slightly thinner piece. I'll explain what this is for in a second, but I sanded everything down and then attached them to the enclosure using a nail gun. Here you can see that I'm adding that thinner piece. The reason I'm doing this is to create a little lip over the edge so that when I slide it onto the stand, it creates a seamless look. You'll get a better look at that later. Anyways, I proceeded to paint the enclosure. The next thing I need to do is make a door. I measured the inside of the opening and cut a piece of glass accordingly. I'll be using an eighth inch thick piece of glass. I would prefer to go thicker, but this is all I could find at the moment. Anyway, I proceeded to cut the glass using a glass cutting tool. I then flipped the pane over and slightly tapped it with the end of the tool. I wanted to add a rim around it to make attaching things easier, and for that I'll use some 1 by 2 thirds inch wood. I measured to the desired length and marked for where to cut, then cut the piece. I cut four pieces total, then cut the ends of them at a 45 degree angle. I also cut a groove in it for the glass to sit in. Before attaching all the pieces, I need to account for hinges using some 1 inch metal hinges. I measured, then marked for where to attach them. I then attached each hinge using some screws. I added a total of 3 hinges to this board. Here you can see all 3 of them. With the hinges attached, I proceeded to paint it to match the enclosure. Probably should have done this before adding the hinges, but they'll all be hidden anyway, so it should be fine. To make sure that the door stays closed tightly, I'll use some neodymium magnets. Like before, I measured, then marked for where to attach them. After that, I used a series of drill bits to drill the holes. I then attached the magnets using some super glue. Now I can assemble all the pieces using some more wood glue. I applied it to the edge of each board and then put it onto the glass and squeezed everything together. I also used some duct tape to hold everything in place while it cured. I then drilled more holes into the actual enclosure and added more neodymium magnets. Like before, I attached them using super glue. Once the wood glue on the door frame had cured, I attached it to the enclosure using some more screws. The final thing I need to do is make the window screen mesh lid. I measured the enclosure and cut a piece of window frame accordingly. It's important to account for the corner pieces when measuring. Anyway, I cut two pieces the same length using a hacksaw. I then went on to dry fit each piece onto the enclosure. After that, I measured out the space in between them and cut two more pieces accordingly. With all the pieces cut and assembled, I went on to attach some window frame mesh. I laid it over the frame and attached it with some spline. I then put it back onto the enclosure. It's a pretty tight fit as is, but I'll secure it further with some screws. The next thing I need to do is make a stand. I'll briefly go over how I made this, but if you want to skip to the end result, use this timestamp. To make the stand, I started by measuring and marking, and cutting some 2x4s. Here you can see I've laid out all the pieces. You can see where the two enclosures will go, as well as the two canopies above them. I need to permanently attach everything using some screws. As with the enclosure, I pre-drilled the holes and further secured it with screws. You'll also notice that I said two enclosures. At some point I will be making another one, but as of right now I only needed one. I wanted to account for that on the stand though, as to save me some time later. I then measured 4 inches down from the top board. I then marked for where to attach the second piece. 
This will be for the canopy. I then permanently attach the board. Here you can see the two frames side by side. I then cut some more 2x4s for side supports. There's really a bunch of different ways that you could build a stand like this, but this is the way I did it. Anyway, I attached them on one side with screws, then flipped it over onto the other side and secured it there. Here's a better look at how the enclosure will fit onto the stand. We're not done though. I need to cover it up using some 1 8 inch plywood. Luckily these pieces were already cut to the perfect size, so all I needed to do was attach them with a nail gun. I then ran a few boards through the table saw for the front paneling. I then gave the whole stand a quick sand. The next thing I need to do is make some canopy doors using some metal hinges that I attached to some more plywood. Unfortunately the screws were a bit too long, so I had to clip them with some wire cutters. I then used a file to smooth things out. With the doors complete, I went on to attach them to the stand using some more screws. With the doors attached, I finished off the stand by painting it. With the stand finished, I moved it down to the animal room and installed the enclosure. And that's how you make a simple DIY plywood reptile enclosure. I'm really happy with not only the way this looks, but also the way it functions. Everything is super secure and stable, which makes me happy. You can also see how that plywood lip comes into play. It makes everything look like a single unit. I would have liked to make the second one along with this one, but unfortunately I just didn't have the budget. Still, I think this one turned out amazing. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments, and if you're going to make one for yourself. Again, I'll put a full materials list down in the description if you're interested in that. But anyways, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe so you can see how I set it up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.